Hey everyone, welcome back to another video over the Wreath Network on TryHackMe. Today we're going to be wrapping things up with the final two tasks, uh, 44 and 45, with the debrief and report, and then the conclusion. We started this assignment with three targets. One Linux, two Windows. All three have now been successful. You're fully compromised. Well done. And if we scroll up, we can now see... Once we go through everything, uh, <laughs> okay, this is a little zoomed in because I made this bigger, but we have compromised everything on this network. Hopefully you've been taking notes and are now about to start writing a report on the topic. If you're not familiar with pen test reports, the following task may come in handy. Additionally, Offensive Security have published an example penetration test report here. Penetration test reports are generally split into th several sections. There is no strictly defined standard, unfortunately, but the following layout should be well received. First up is the executive summary. This should be essentially non-technical, providing a brief overview of the job that was contracted to and completed by the pen tester, including a concise summary of the scope of the engagement. You should also include a very short summary of the results here, as well as a concise analysis of the overall security posture of the company. Beware, though, that, as the name suggests, this section is designed to be read by the higher-ups in a company who may not have a technical background or the time to devote to a long-winded explanation. This section is particularly important as, in many cases, it may be the only section that the client actually looks at. It should catch the eye and will set the tone for the rest of the report. At the end of, or immediately after, the executive summary, include a timeline showing an overview of what you did and when you did it. This allows whoever is assigned to fix the vulnerabilities to check the logs from the compromised systems uh, and see what a successful attack looks like from their privileged perspective. That can be really helpful to defense uh, just to allow them to actually examine what happened. Next, we have the findings and remediations section. This should be a more technical section. It should provide a detailed explanation of the vulnerabilities you found as well as your suggested fixes for these. Additionally, you should indicate the severity of each vulnerability and the risk to the company should the vulnerability be exploited by a bad actor. The CVSS calculator will be useful to this, or for this. You should not necessarily be providing a step-by-step -step account of your methodology here, but there should be enough detail for a technically able person to see what the problem is and what the solutions might be. After the findings and remediations should come the attack narrative. This should be a step-by-step -step write-up of the actions you took against the targets, including enough detail for a technically competent individual to replicate the attacks in exactly. In many ways, this is similar to a detailed write-up for a CTF. A section that is good to include, but often skipped, the cleanup section, and this is something I mentioned quite a bit as we were going throughout the lab. This should detail the actions you took to eradicate your presence on the targets. Uh, in this specific case, removing added uh, any added accounts, deleting exploits, or created files, etc. If there are things you are not able to remove, you need to put them here and make sure that you call them out when you're reading out the report. Or if you're sending this over in, e in an email, make sure that you specifically let the client know that, hey, you need to go through and clean this up. This needs to be taken care of. Next, but not last, there should be a conclusion. This just summarizes the report, rounding off the results, and stressing the importance of patching as required. Finally, you should include references, then appendices. The references section includes full references to any work cited throughout the report, for example, maybe a quote or table from the OWASP website, or referencing a newspaper article on an attack which utilized a vulnerability found in the target network. The references section should also be used to link to relevant CVEs, common vulnerability and exposures, CWEs, common weaknesses, a weakness enumerations, or, uh, and slash or C-A-P-E-C-S, a common attack pattern enumerations and classifications for found vulnerabilities. Your appendices should include any large pieces of information that would have cluttered up the main text. For example, if you had to edit an exploit as we did during the wreath network, you should include a full copy of the edited code as an appendix and reference it when mentioned in the other sections. Equally, any code you write should be short, short eh, stored here along with any large amounts of data or big table slash diagrams. So the section should be one executive summary, then the timeline, then your findings and remediations, your attack narrative, cleanup, 
conclusion, references, and then finally the appendices. Pentest reports will usually have a branded front cover and table of contents before the report itself begins. There are many Pentest report templates available on the internet which can be used to provide a baseline for this. Many companies will also provide their penetration testers with a company specific template to follow. Regardless of whether you choose uh, you use a pre-built template or create your own, find a style and stick with it. With the report written and proofread, you should send the PDF to Thomas, then sit back or you send the PDF to Thomas, then sit back and relax. Your work is done. Uh, write a report or just read the information of the task. I do recommend writing a report. This is a great way to practice. We'll go ahead and mark that as completed for the sake of the video. If you write a report, you are welcome to keep it for your own records or submit it to the room as a write-up for others to read. Highly recommend doing that. In the real world, a section of the pre-engagement meetings between the client and the pen testing company would set out expectations for report handling procedures. This would cover things like the delivery method for the report, i.e. how it would be transferred securely between the consultants and the clients, as well as and when consultant copies of the report should be disposed of. Clients obviously do not want a report detailing their technical vulnerabilities falling into the wrong hands, so this section is very important. Consider the following brief to be the report handling procedures for this assignment. Reports should be written in English and submitted as PDFs hosted on Google Drive or an equivalent online service to be viewed with no downloads required. Reports should not contain answers to the questions as far as possible. Uh, host names are fine, passwords or password hashes are not. As you are being encouraged to write these in the format of a penetration test report, write up, uh, write up submitted in other formats will not be accepted to the room. If you want to do a video walk through the network, then this can be linked at the end of an otherwise complete PDF report. We'll mark that as completed and go into the final task, the conclusion, final thoughts. Thus, we reach the conclusion of the Wreath Network. We covered a wide range of topics in this room. Combined, there was a lot of information to absorb, so kudos for getting here. Hopefully, you've learned some new tricks along the way, no matter your prior experience, or at least very, uh, or at the very least, been able to apply known concepts to a new situation. This room was designed to be an introduction to the topics covered. Now that you've completed Wreath, you should be able to confidently tackle some of the other networks on the site, if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this room, keep an eye out for more in the future. And then you can follow Muland Oracle on Twitter if you want more updates. Otherwise, we'll go and mark that as complete. And that is going to do it for the Wreath Network. And here we can see everything compromised. As always, if you have any questions over this, I will have the Try Hack Me Discord and subreddit linked in the video description below. But otherwise, until next time, happy hacking!